everybody. So we're up to uh, chapter one, section six, and uh, which is about the complement of a set. And uh, as we'll see, this is um, kind of a natural idea and there's not a tremendous amount of new material here. So uh, hopefully we will not have to spend a tremendous amount of time agonizing about it. So um, what is the set complement? So the complement of a set is defined in a particular situation when we're looking at a set which is a subset of a bigger set called the universal set. And when we're given a set which is a subset of a big universal set, then we say that the complement of x, which we write with this um, uh, bar over it, is just the set u minus x. So it's everything which is in the universal set but which is not an x. A naive definition of the complement, naive means it works for a little while and then you realize it's got problems, would be just the complement of a set is the select collection of x so that x is not an element of x. That's kind of what you're getting at. But here's the problem with that definition. Suppose x was the set, I don't know, 4, 20, and banana. Well, the complement of the set is everything that's anywhere in the universe, which is not an element of X. And then you'd have to worry about, well, what exactly do you mean by everything? Um, you know, is, um, am I a member of X, the complement of X? Um, is Air Force One an element of the complement of X? And it's just kind of a very vaguely defined notion. And so the way we fix that is by thinking of x inside some bigger set u, which we might in this particular case be the collection of all x so that x is a fruit or x is an element of the natural numbers. And in that case, x, the complement of x, which is u minus x, would be the collection of everything which is a fruit, but not a banana, or a natural number, but not 4 or 20. And so then we end up with uh, with a notion of a complement that makes some kind of a sense. So uh, this is one of these situations where sometimes people are imprecise and they don't really specify what the universal set is. So they might, for instance, say um, that, that X is, our, is the set of pairs X, Y, where X, Y is in R2 and X squared plus Y squared is less than or equal to one. So this set, is the unit circle. It's the collection of points in the plane. We can draw it as the unit circle. And in that sense, it seems sort of natural to think of X bar as the collection of points in R2, where X squared plus Y squared is bigger than one. So that's everything out here. In, in orange. And what's implicit in that is that um, the universal set is R2. And really you should specify the universal set, but sometimes people don't. So here's a couple of examples. Uh, let's suppose we start with the set of prime numbers. So remember what the set of prime numbers is. X is a prime number if it is a natural number greater than one whose only divisors, whose only divisors are one and x. 
So the sequence of prime numbers begins with 2, and it includes 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and so on. So in the context of a universal set being equal to the natural numbers, the complement of the set of prime numbers is u minus p. So it's the natural numbers minus the prime numbers. And, well, we can list some of those elements. Those are the, that's 1 is in there, 4 is in there, 6 is in there, 8 is in there, 9 is in there, 10 is in there, and so on. And these numbers here, which are the numbers bigger than 1, which are not prime, are called composite. And then there's one. One is kind of special. It's not really prime or composite. And this isn't really a course on number theory, so we don't have to agonize about that too much. The real message here is that in order to make sense of the complement of P, there has to be a universal set given. And here the universal set that's given is the natural numbers. Here's an example that uh, comes from uh, the plane. So X is the Cartesian product of the open interval 1 and 3 with the closed interval from 1 to 2 in the plane, and the universal set is the plane. So this is good practice for us to draw another set like this. And this is the first time I think that we've looked at one where, actually, you know, let, well, we've looked at one where the it's an open interval. So here's going to be 1. Here's two, just for reference, and here's three, and here's going to be one and two. And the set of points in X are all the points whose X coordinate is in the open interval from one to three. So remember what this is. X is the collection of ordered pairs A, B, where A is strictly bigger than one and less than three, and B is bigger than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 2. Because this is, a fan, this is what it means to say that A belongs to the open interval from 1 to 3, and this is what it means to say that B belongs to the closed interval from 1 to 2. So if we were going to draw this here, um, we're going to get, again, a rectangle. Here's our rectangle. Get rid of this little bit that I overshot by. But we have to be careful because it, we do include all the points here where x is between 1 and 3 and y is equal to 1. And we do include all the points here where x is between 1 and 3 and y is equal to 2. But we have to leave out this edge all the way down, including the corner. And we have to leave out this edge. Whoops. I mean to leave this out. all the way out, including the corner, and leave out this edge all the way out, including the corner. And that's because the points, so the, here we, we've included the top and bottom, but left out the sides and the corners. Because this point here has coordinate 1, 1, so its first coordinate, it's this point here, has coordinate 1, 1, so we've left out, um, we left it out because x is not allowed to be equal to 1. So what is the complement of x? Well, we're supposed to sketch it. So the complement of x are going to be all the points in R2, because our universal set here is R2, all the points in R2 which are not in this set. Maybe I'll, just for the sake of co completeness, let's color this region in yellow. So ye the yellow part here is x. And the part that we've left out is everything out here, the green stuff. But we have to include this and this. And if I were maybe being a little bit more careful, just to in indicate what's going on, let me color in these pieces here yellow, because they're part of X. 
So that's our picture for um, the complement of this set in the plane. And here's one more example. So we have three sets. Um, our universe, maybe we'll, even though it's written last, let's start with our universal set. So x is the set of natural numbers that are bigger than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 8. So what is u? Well, 0 isn't in the natural numbers. So we start with 1, and we just have the set. And here we've included 8, because 8 is in that set. B, A, sorry, A, is the set of even numbers in this set. So it consists of 2, 4, 6, and 8. And B is the set of odd numbers in this range. So it consists of 1, 3, 5, and 7. So the question we're asked is, what is A bar intersect B? So A bar, relative to this um, universal set, is u minus a. So it's the collection of things that are in u but not in a. So in u but not in a. So let's see. 1 is in u but not in a. 2 is in a, so that doesn't count. 3 is in u but not in a. 4 doesn't count. 5 is in u but not in a, but it doesn't. So And then 6 is in u but it is in a, so that we don't want. So we're just left with 1, 3, 5, and 7. And then a bar intersect b are the things that are in both a bar and b. But it turns out a bar is b, so everything that's in a bar is also in b. So it's again 1, 3, 5, and 7. So in this case, we have that a bar intersect b actually equals b. And here's one more example, again, a geometric one. So we have the set of points x and y in R2, where y is less than x squared. So we can sketch this out. Um, let's first draw the line y equals x squared, just to get ourselves oriented. So that's this parabola. Now, the points we're interested in are the places where y is less than x squared. So those are going to be the points that are below this parabola. Because, for I mean, if you're like here at 1, here's 1. So this is going to be the point 1, 1. And we're going to want all the points whose y coordinates are less than 1. So we're going to be down below this parabola. So this red region here. is going to be the set x. And the parabola is a dotted line because since this is a less than sign, maybe that's confusing, I don't want to put that there. Since this is a less than sign, we don't want to include the parabola itself. When we take the complement in R2, we're taking the set of points that don't belong. They do belong to R2, but they don't belong to this set X. So that's going to be everything on the inside of the parabola together with the parabola itself. So again, it depends on the universal set what the complement is. Okay, I hope that uh, makes some sense, and um, we'll move on from here.